Hello and welcome to my second episode. Um, yeah, so this is a little bit different change of pace compared to the first episode. Um, with the LV1 engines, I eventually actually got it to about 50 kilometers high, and it just couldn't get any further than that. And I don't even want to mess around with, you know, thousand parts, and it's it's just a slideshow. It's so it's not even worth trying but so anyways with this episode I uh, landed a little bit something special on the moon um, I've been watching a lot of the other guys on um, YouTube which is you know Kurt and uh, Thor LP and uh, there's a few other ones I can't really remember right now but um, none of them have actually made a rover or I, I just don't see any videos really based on a rover and if they are they're not stock parts or whatever and I just wanted to see if it would even be possible with um, the current version I'm sure in a later version it would be even easier and you'd probably be able to make all kinds of different uh, just craziness anyways so there was a lot. What you're looking at was probably the 30th launch. There was actually another vehicle that was almost similar, but it just had a lot of problems. It wasn't stable. It burned away RCS fuel like crazy, um, especially once it got into space. Um, I, I just I, I got fed up with it, and I decided that I needed to do major redesign this one is actually probably the best by far and the later ones will probably be even better so anyways um, the rover would sit right here where you can see this small docking port here and it can actually redock and that's what the purpose for having all these RCS tanks and all these xenon gas and all the extra fuel I mean, I don't really have a lot of extra fuel, but yeah. Um, the larger ones on the outside, though, however, for um, possible moon base slash um, having a refueling truck, so to speak, that could drive out to these, dock up, fuel it, and uh, head out to the next one. I plan on landing a lot more of these just to explore the surface a lot more because I feel like the surface of the moon just I, I haven't even really done much w with the moon at all I mean I've landed a few times you know you walk the curbs around and it's just so slow so you don't even want to bother you know getting too far away so anyways my landing site and I didn't really I'm not really like that skilled. I'm still kind of pretty novice with this game, but my landing site is actually right here. And I didn't know this at the time, but apparently I landed right next to an Easter egg, which will only lead to another episode. You know, we gotta go explore the mysterious Easter egg, which if I zoom out from here, you can actually see it. It's the moon arch. And I've only seen screenshots of it, and, um, where is it now? You gotta look for the shiny. Where's the shiny? Oh, see, there we go. There's the shiny. Yep. Oh, there it is. Next episode, we will drive through the arch. But you're probably asking yourself, how are you going to drive there? You haven't even showed us this rover yet. Well, here he is. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, I just want to cuddle with him. Oh. Yeah, so, I mean, I put lights on him. I had to pack as much as I could into the smallest amount of space. And I'm sure you're wondering why I have fuel on board. Well, like I said, you... If I'm going to have refueling vehicles, I might as well test them on a small scale. So, 
with this, I mean, you could bring fuel anywhere on the moon, basically. Um, the only really bad feature, and I can't really seem to solve this other than just not putting the solar panels away, is that uh, if you put them away, the the core itself actually uses the the uh, electrical charge. Now, if it brings it down to zero, your rover is basically dead. So I would suggest maybe either docking it up with its home when you're done, or uh, you know just leaving the solar panels out. I don't really know if this game will just close the panels on you or whatever. So, anyways, I might as well show you, all right, well, show you this thing in action. Now, there is RCS fuel on it, but it is not powered by RCS. As you can see, when you power it up, for some reason, the wheels, I think they just kind of get stuck a little bit. So, if you just kind of knock it a little bit with RCS and just kind of move it around, it will start picking up speed. So just knock it around, you know, or just kind of push it forward. Oh, yeah, maybe I should have shut the, uh, turn the brakes off. That would have made more sense, but here, come on, be cool. There we go. Now, just to show you that it wasn't actually the RCS, I will actually put it in reverse. There. I'm not touching it at all. And I'll actually turn the RCS off. Now... As far as the maneuverability, the turning isn't so good, but I mean, I'm basically being powered with just the ion engine, which I find to be probably the best engine you could use for roving. I mean, it's so low of thrust. You, I mean, you're not really going to gain a lot of speed off of it, and it also burns the fuel so slowly that, I mean, just to have a stock of RCS fuel, or I mean not RCS, but the uh, xenon fuel. It, you know, to get one little can of this to the moon is like nothing. I'm sure you could probably put it on, um, you know, like a very tiny rocket and get it here if you wanted to. No, come on, get going. I was wondering if I left the brakes on. So, yeah, I might as well show you that I can actually connect with the, uh, the home. Now, the RCS, too, is also for emergency maneuvers or, you know, just actually docking up with this thing because it's actually somewhat hard if you're not going to use RCS. I mean, you would basically have to do uh, turns and, you know, donuts until you could get into this little little hub here um, so yeah I might as well show you that before the end of this video come on get going there you go now that I'm on a hill so I'm just gonna roll using whatever momentum I can get stop come on uh, okay so up a little bit. There we go. Now you're going to see it's just going to dance around here for a while. But then this is what the RCS is for. Just boost it up a little bit and get your connection. Come on. There we go. So as you can see, and you know, you can transfer fuel to the probe. You can do whatever you want. So I'm going to let you go on this note. Thank you. Next episode, Exploring the Mysterious Moon Arch.